of NYC Resistor Hacker Group. I'm also a ham radio operator, call sign KC2UHB. I'm at the Dayton Hamvention right now and would like to share a little bit of my hobby with you. Something that we're doing with Stanford University. Okay. The Dayton Hamvention in Dayton, Ohio is an annual event that's a maker's heaven for amateur radio operators, or hams as we're called. You come up here and look at the meter, and they don't sound the same. Why? There are three days of exhibits, demonstrations, forums, dealers, and sellers. Inside and outside is one of the world's largest flea markets. Hams were the original makers and hackers, using new, used, and scavenged parts to make transmitters, receivers, and antennas capable of communicating with other hams anywhere on Earth and beyond. They even contact astronaut hams on the International Space Station. In fact, most astronauts are hams, licensed by their own countries. November Zero, Kilo Golf Mike, we've got you loud and clear aboard the International Space Station. Welcome aboard. Okay, Colonel, very good. Uh, nice to make a contact with you again. And uh, hey, just a question. I saw your Twitter profile picture. Is that uh, Everest Base Camp? Go ahead. Yeah, it sure is. It's uh, it's Mount Everest, and uh, when I was there, that was taken at base camp. Uh, have you been there? Oh yeah, yeah. We've been to base camp a couple of times. And uh, in this hobby, communicating is the key word. And when computers came along, they fit right into the hams' wide world. Using their technical skills and imagination, hams put together advanced communication networks connected by radio waves instead of wires. By powering up this radio, it becomes part of the mesh. The network discovers it, it, utilizes it, and then this radio in turn repeats services out to the parking lot and other services that are exterior to the building. The ham radio bands are the last place in the radio spectrum where individuals can make or modify their own wireless equipment, try ideas out, and see what happens. This group from Austin, Texas is experimenting with wireless mesh networks that can grow and adapt with plug-and-play flexibility. What I did was I took the OLSR Daemon software, compiled it on this little bad guy, and uh, got it part of the mesh. This will this will mesh with the other node. A mesh unit is nothing more than a wireless router modified by ham radio operators with new software and bigger antennas. Turn a mesh unit on, and it automatically connects to become part of an extended network that can relay any kind of data. Mesh networks are so smart that if one node fails or goes offline, the message will still get delivered. And then you have 1K resistors, which are brown, black, and red. Making things is one of the joys of being a ham radio operator. This group at the Escondido California Radio Club is building radio direction finders used to locate hidden transmitters as a sport or to find lost victims in emergencies. Your antenna will be the last thing that we assemble, and that will go to the outside screw terminals and it's the difference between the signal going to each antenna is how we find out which way the signal is coming from. The club is one of over 7,000 active ham radio clubs in the U.S. Many ham radio clubs are affiliated with ARRL, the National Association for Amateur Radio. Radio clubs are the in-person aspect of the hobby. Hold it up high so that your body doesn't affect it. They're similar to hacker groups, but with a communications attitude. It's in there, I just can't, I just can't see. <laughs> Locating things by radio is a useful skill, especially if that item is a weather balloon. If it would go through right through that patch, that'd be good. Just so we could, it's kind of fun to watch it go up. Carrying a TV camera and a ham radio video transmitter. In three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. After the launch, the balloons tracked by eye and then with a homebrew APRS, automatic position reporting system using GPS satellite data. It's an imaginative combining of technologies. This guy puts out two watts of power, and it has band modules, so you can easily change from band to band. has a, a, a dummy load and power meter um, circuitry, and that's for a guy who wants to have more power. Like the challenge of catching a big fish with lightweight tackle, 
Some hams enjoy making and using low-power equipment to catch the big one. This annual meeting of hams in Fairborn, Ohio is called Four Days in May. It's for hams interested in communicating using extremely low power. Is that actually on the air? Yeah, it is. Um, right here. The, just these few little wires. Low power communication is an art, a science, and some magic thrown in all at the same time. On the receiving end, low power usually means weak signals, and the challenge is pulling weak signals out of the background noise. A leader in weak signal detection is Nobel Prize winner Joe Taylor, K1JT. The basic objective was to make it possible to make uh, meteor scatter contacts, two-way contacts, um, uh, reflecting signals off the trails of, of meteors, and uh, possibly also by moon bounce, at the very lowest possible signal levels. I mean, it was well known that you could do these things with, a, uh, with high power and big antennas, uh, but I wanted to be able to do it with moderately high power or even low power and uh, antennas that you could put, uh, put up in a, in a neighborhood, not necessarily a, a, a huge Texas array of uh, 32 Yagis or something like that. Because of my own background in, uh, in science and physics, uh, I do the number crunching in the language I know best, which is Fortran. That makes some people laugh, but it's an ancient but honorable language, I assure you. <laughs> Joe's programs are enjoyed by hams worldwide and distributed free via the internet. Four Days in May is held concurrently with the Dayton Hamvention. At the Hamvention, everybody's looking around for friends they only know from over-the-air contacts, and often they find them. Hey, Doug. Hi, Rob Ken, Zen Zero KGM. Hey, good to meet you, Rob. Very good. It's good to see you here on planet Earth. Anyway, Absolutely. So. Thanks for all those great contacts up on the space station. We got we made at least 15 or 20 between us, and I really appreciate that. And uh, you did a lot, actually, for getting amateur radio back on the space station, and that's great that you uh, you helped us out with that. Th thank you, Rob. Well, it was an amazing experience. I was uh, I'm kind of a, kind of new to this uh, community. Yeah. And I uh, had a lot of fun with the uh, ham radio on board the International Space Station. Inside or out, there's yeah, something great. of interest for every DIY builder, maker, hacker, or ham. Ham radio is a DIY paradise. Hi again, it's me, Diana. I hope you enjoyed this quick tour through the world of amateur radio. We share this world with close to two million people around the globe. And I hope one day to meet you on the air. Come and join us on the air. Surf the skies and find new friends Let the world unfold before you You'll be the one who sets the trends Cause you're not like those poor old wage slaves Change your life and start anew Join us on the airwaves You'll feel free and you'll be happy too